what's going on, family? Thank you for joining us for another episode of Courtney's Corner. Today we're going to touch on a serious matter, traumatic stress and substance abuse. Trauma affects individuals on different levels, from sexual assault to child maltreatment, domestic violence, war-related trauma, school and community violence, medical trauma, trauma loss, and natural disasters, which sometimes lead to the use of drugs and substance abuse. Stick around, because when, we're come, when we come back, we're going to shed some light on this topic. Don't go nowhere. You're here on Courtney's Corner. So yes, we are back, me and RJ, and we're discussing trauma and substance abuse. And mm -hmm. it feels good to be educated on, on this topic because it's such a heavy and deep topic. Yeah. Um, so here with us today is a trauma specialist by the name of Becca Chandler. She's on the phone with us. Hi, Becca, how are you? Hey. I'm wonderful. How are you guys doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for taking this time out to be on this episode with us. We really appreciate it. Definitely. So one of the things that we um, that we spoke about before we um, kind of solidified things is that you actually have a trauma and wellness center, if I'm correct. Yes, that's correct. Uh -huh. oh, okay, so why don't you just tell the viewers a little bit about who you are? Who's Becca? Sure. So I um, I was born and raised in Fairbanks, Alaska, and in junior high. Uh, I was always getting all these calls and people, I was like a little counselor and my friends would be like, I feel so much better after I talked to you. So my parents got me my own phone line <laughs> and um, went to college. Then I went to massage school and I just really realized how much I loved all the healing arts. And I mm. thought, wouldn't it be great if someone could come in, um, you know, one person might need nutrition, one person might need just to be listened to. You know, if someone could come in for a massage and I could just kind of handle whatever they needed, like sometimes people are suffering and they're not, you know, they don't know how to meditate or they don't know how to eat good or no one's ever listened to them. Hmm. Um, so I just kept taking more and more trainings and um, became really holistic. And so I, I implemented neurofeedback. So I volunteer with the local foot team here in southern oregon so the coaches and trainers might call and say hey we have someone who got a concussion we want you to work with or an injury that's not getting better um massage therapists and doctors will send people to me so um back at back in alaska before i moved to oregon i started working with the alaska state smoke jumpers uh -huh. and they had a lot of injuries and so i really um became an injury specialist and then I've always like meditated and been into prayer. So I, I'm able to kind of help people um, when they come in, like some people might have substance abuse. A, a lot of people, um, you know, have PTSD or even have right. head injuries and don't even realize it. So um, I also have a strong network that I can, I can send people like, go watch this video, go follow the hashtag free principles, you know, mm -hmm. for the addiction stuff. So it's, it's been a really beautiful journey. So do you, and, um, do you find that normally your clients who come in bo both are connected, like trauma and substance abuse, or are they coming in for separate um, purposes? Well, you know, different people, you know, no matter what the, the addiction is, it's all, it's all the same. So yeah. I might have someone who's a workaholic or they run every day. They use sports as their addiction. Um, I think when people come from neurofeedback, they usually are suffering more. With like both. Yeah. Well, like, that. and some people with um, PTSD and substance abuse, they want body work, mm -hmm. you know, and um, other people, I feel like the neurofeedback has been re really phenomenal for cl for clearing those hmm. kind of patterns. What is the neurofeedback? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. So if you imagine on a stormy day and the ocean has all these big waves, that's, um, that's when the brain waves are not calm and balanced like a, when they say on a lake it's like glass today and the brain doesn't have a feedback system mm -hmm. so the brain waves can be too going too fast like you know normally maybe we have PTSD or we've had a trauma um, and our body can actually clear those 
it's, it's within us. Our body knows how to heal and it wants to heal and emotions want to clear. But sometimes we might go to substances when we don't know how to, how to clear the, the traumas that have happened. So with, with mm. neurofeedback, when the brain gets to hear what it's doing, it can say, oh, I'm frozen here. I'm in this mm -hmm. fight or flight or I'm going way too fast and I can't sleep. So the brain can reset itself. Right. And what are normally... What are normally, um, since you've been doing this for such a long time, what are normally the first signs of a person who is going through PTSD? Well, you know, they, um, <clears throat> they're not sleeping good. Um, they can't concentrate very well. They, um, they can kind of, kind of talk too fast, and they, they always have to be listening to music, and they, have to, they always have to be up to something. Or, or you can go into a frozen state where, mm -hmm. like, you talk really slow or um, you, you just have kind of lost that kind of passion for life. So some right. people, their brain waves freeze. Right. Where maybe you're always afraid to try new things. Um, you don't want to leave your house. And, and everyone is, di is different, and it can be in different degrees. Mm -hmm. So have you found that your success rate differs from... Uh, individual per se that's taking medication to deal with these traumas and to deal with these substance abuses do you feel like you feel as though the holistic approach works better well I think you know the the medication that's more like wow I'm really in a bad place and I don't have time you know I'm bleeding I don't have time to go to a naturopath and take herbs and fix it you know so mm -hmm. I think the medications can be awesome to get someone through a place but there's nothing that the body and no disease that we can't heal from mm. pardon me so so a lot of people that I work with they might be doing um, medications but but be working on strengthening their system and 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 you know balancing up their health right and then eventually cut back but always need them or completely get off of them you know depending on the case so, so I just wanted to go back real quick you're saying the neurofeedback uh, making somebody aware of, you know, these um, traumas and issues, give them a better chance to um, correct it. it. Your brain has a better chance of correcting these um, brain waves that cause this trauma. Yeah, that's mm. a great question. So if your if your hair is messed up and you don't you don't have a mirror, you don't have any feedback. You can't really fix it. But right. when you when you look in the mirror and you can get this feedback, you can fix it. So your brain can reset its brain waves. Wow. But it doesn't have a feedback system. Mm. So, you know, without being able to hear, your brain can hear its own brain waves that runs through a computer and we use this little conductive paste in the EEG sensor. So nothing goes in your brain with mm -hmm. neurofeedback. Um, so then when your brain hears what it's doing, it, it, it can reset. So. Um, I like to do it like um, maybe I have a football player. He, he hurt his knee, and then he got surgery, and his knee's just been swelling, and it's never been the same. Like trauma can get stuck in the body. Like you can have a knot in a pair of tennis shoes in the closet stuck for 40 years, and you can take that out and untie that knot, and that's kind of how trauma is. Mm. Right, right. And so, different people heal trauma in different ways. Um, mm. different, different traumas want to clear, you know, in different ways. So when people use substances to try to cope with that, I guess you were saying that you would recommend uh, medication in these dark times where you need like kind of a quick fix to kind of get on track. Um, what is the difference between those medications and, you know, these... Illegal self substances. Yeah, yes. that we use. Well, not even illegal all the time. Some people like to smoke cigarettes. Some people like to have a drink or six or seven, whatever, to kind of numb themselves and kind of cope with you know whatever mm -hmm. issue or trauma they're dealing with currently so i was just wondering what is how is it appropriate to use one medication and, and not the other it can it you, you see what i'm saying the yeah. um abuse of medication versus the abuse of substances that are oftentimes a lot easier to get your hands Damn on medication than, yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I have a story. I took my dog to a vet, and the vet wanted to run all these tests and get them on all these medications. And I went to a holistic vet who had veterinarian skills plus additional 
natural healing and now nowadays we have the integrative doctors Mm -hmm. where they study prevention and so they know about herbs and um and pharmaceuticals so the you know the the herbal holistic that it costed ten dollars for a tincture and that cleared up my dog's problem so i think you really want to go for if you have a you always want to make sure your doctor's open-minded, and if you can get a naturopath or an integrative doctor, maybe have a general practitioner and an acupuncturist, so you're actually, you know, medications can have downstream problems, but medications mm-hmm. can, sa- can save people if you're right. bleeding, you better go to the doctor. So um, I think it's great if you can have, I call it having, um, you know, rowing your boat, having both oars in the water, so mm. have preventative, alternative, natural, holistic, and have... A radical, a, you know, a normal medical doctor. Right. So, what do we say? What do we say to the to the individuals who may want to try this approach but can't afford it? You know, it, it, sometimes it's easier for them to, you know, get other substances because yeah. they can go out and get this easy rather than go yeah. see a doctor where they gotta they gotta spend thousands of dollars. You know what yeah, I'm sure. saying? Yeah. Uh, gotcha, to to gotcha. take that approach. So, what do we? What should we do? Um, what is? What are some of your solutions? And so kind what of I, what I like to teach people, you know, depending on what their religious belief is, but I'm really into meditation and prayer because meditation is free and that can rebalance your brain waves. Mm-hmm. And then I like folk remedies because, you know, they've pa- they've you know made it through the test of time and they're inexpensive. Yeah. Um. And then I, I use like a Nerf two activator. Um that helps turn on the body to work how it should and okay. so there's there's a pharmaceutical version that's 40,000 and then they they did all these tests on this nerf 2 that turns on your body to work how it should and they said it Washington State said it might be the biggest health breakthrough of all time so th- so that is something when your body's working how it's you know how it's meant to mm-hmm. um, I feel like that's instead of doing all these little band-aid methods on the outside so i i use the neurofeedback and then i you know i do the body work and i sit and listen to people and then i do the the nerve 2 activation okay and what and i i give free neurofeedback um you know the 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 athletes they're in school they're they're doing sports they can't afford it so um, I'd love to get like some millionaires to buy some free yes. and go take it like yes. Jamaica, Haiti, um, yes. anywhere, California, anywhere where people are suffering and they can't afford, can't afford it. It'd be great if it was, you know, free, free, right. Prison, and they don't get people going back into prison mm. once their brain waves are working. Cause it's hard to function when your brain waves are right. all. And so how long with this, um, this neural feedback, how long is that process for an individual depend um, is it depending upon that specific person or do you have like a is it like just a, a conversation right. or like like a, what is it what is, what is happening there so um on my instagram web on my instagram side i wanted to give free free health information to people i'm kind of finding my voice and learning as i go so um one if someone's a vietnam vet you know they might need they might need you know multiple like 25 or someone's had insomnia for 10 years they right. might need like 20 30 40 50 mm-hmm. um someone has heavy metal poisons and has a bad diet isn't getting the nutrients they need they might do a lot and right. not get a hundred percent so you know you have to be getting like the good nutrients um and there's some things that are not as expensive you know to get a lot of nutrients like dark leafy greens like collard mm-hmm. greens kelp you know there's a lot of things that aren't that you can grow yourself okay um kelp um kale so you know it's I try and like see where someone's at and try and make Kinda sure guide. they're educated. So I try yeah. and make posts of fish oil, like sardines at Costco are a dollar. Uh, wow. They found out a lot of PTSD um, people coming back from the war weren't committing suicide as much when mm-hmm. they were just getting fish oil right. in their brain, which helps the brain waves. So okay. I try and post about sardines, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Green, sweet potatoes, just kind of get. Oh, Becca, you're making me hungry. Oh my goodness. Yeah, not everyone has access. Like they say like ten percent of the healers are helping ten percent of the healers, so we have to go help the other ninety percent. So yes. Instagram is great because then anyone can access you know, you can do hashtag biohacking, hashtag, mm-hmm. you know, superfoods. Okay. So um Becca, first and foremost, thank you so much for taking this time to be 
you know, just to inform us and educate us a little bit more, because honestly, I didn't know half of these things. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate you. Um, speaking about Instagram, can you please tell the viewers where they can find more information about you? Because this, this is necessary. Sure, yeah, and, and people could even ask me questions and I could make videos for them. So I'm just Coach Bex, B-E-K-S, Coach Bex, okay. B-E-K-S. All right, well, Becca, one more time, thank you for taking this time out. I appreciate you. Guys, if you want to find out more information about Becca or anything, please follow her social media. We'll be right back on Courtney's Corner. Thank you so much, you guys. Thanks, man. Thank you. It's a powerful opportunity. <laughs> love is love. Hey, so welcome back. We are here still talking about traumatic um, stress and um, substance abuse. And on the phone is none other than Miss Betsy Elmore. Thank you for being here, Miss Betsy. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's such a pleasure. Um, if you can, please just give us a little briefing about who Miss Elmore is and what it is that you do. Well, I'm originally from New Jersey. I live in North Carolina now. Um, Durham, I right? A, I run a transitional house for men coming home from prison who suffer from, of course, trauma and substance abuse. Mm. Mm. So oh, the person man. that we need to speak to. Yes. Let's get into so it. So when did you when did you start this? What what motivated you to want to um, make this transitional house? Well, my son came to North Carolina 26 years ago. And ended up going to prison. Mm. So I came to North Carolina to support him and get him out of prison. Right. And um, my daughter and I were successful in doing that. And after all the things that was given to us, I decided to open up a transitional house to give back to oh, my man. community. Okay, so do you find so these people who are coming to this transitional house are these um, individuals also suffering f from substance abuse? You find that they're doing that, that they're also suffering from like mental trauma, especially from being in jail. Um, do you happen to see that? Definitely, definitely. And uh, oftentimes people abuse substance to numb what's going on with yes. them because a lot of people, especially in our community, suffer, in the black community, suffer from some form of mental illness, whether right. it be depression, schizophrenia, mm -hmm. and uh, oftentimes we don't like to talk about it. Okay, uh, yes, I agree. And I had a question as far as what is the, the traumas, what are the traumas that um, a lot of people are coming to you with that you know they might need help with and a lot of times or are shunned away yeah or shunned away or try to self heal well, and self-medicate with these substances anyone who's been incarcerated for any length of time just being in a prison setting mm -hmm. uh, the noise the clanking of the doors to be talked down to mm. um, all day every day all night that in itself, you're traumatized. Right. And uh, that has a profound effect on anyone that has spent any time in prison. It also has an effect on someone visiting. If you've ever visited someone in prison, you hear the noise, you hear the yelling, you hear the screaming. So, of course, you're going to be traumatized from this. Right. Um, so what are, what are some... Um, Sources. What are some solutions that you are me that you try to incorporate with the people who are coming to this traditional house? Is it only for like a specific amount of time, or are they there for however long? Well, it's for a certain amount of time because of the funding, unfortunately. Mm. And when a person comes to our house, we do an assessment. We look at their needs. We look at uh, their substance abuse, whether it's alcohol or drugs. Okay. And we have uh, NA classes, AA classes, and we start on some type of a treatment plan to help that person deal with some of these demons that uh, has affected them while they were incarcerated. And even before 
uh, they went to prison. Some mm -hmm. people, like I said, were suffering from a mental illness and it went untreated, undiagnosed. Right. right. So what are, um, what are some of these uh, solutions? So you were saying like you give them treatment plans. So what, what are some treatments? Are they mostly like um, holistic? Are they meditation? Are they prayer? What are the treatments that we're giving them? Well, uh, most of the ones that you just said, mm -hmm. but we mm -hmm. also have to um, develop a, uh, a plan on, okay, now that we know why you are abusing this substance, let's get to the root of it mm. and to work on it. Because if you take another drug to get rid of that drug, you're just creating another, another problem. Uh, another problem, right. Right. So it is a holistic approach. It's a meditation. And at sometimes there is medication. Um, mm. I'm also involved with uh, NAMI the National Association on Mental Illness. Right. So it helps me to understand it's a brain disorder. Mm -hmm. It's like any other illness, like cancer or leukemia. It's a brain disorder, and we have to treat it from that place. So I had a question. Um, how do people respond when you want to go into these deep, dark places of trauma? and take away that security blanket they have of using these drugs and these substances. How is, yeah. yeah well, having a frame of reference is a help. And I let them know who I am. Mm -hmm. I also let them know about my son's experience that he had while he was in prison. Mm -hmm. Because when he came home, we already knew he needed to see a therapist because he had spent 25 years in prison. Mm -hmm. So he had seen, heard, and experienced things that I can't even imagine. Right. So we knew that he would have to have a place where he could empty some of that stuff out. Mm -hmm. And we knew it wasn't going to happen overnight. It would be a period of time. A journey. Um, right. Some people stay in therapy for a very long time. And it's finding the right therapist. Mm -hmm. It's important Somebody who actually to cares. the right therapist to help you with these things. Right. So, um, what do you what is your success like what are your success rate do you have like a percentage of the people who come into this transitional house like how many people will leave out changed leave out you know ready to go back into the world and do better and be better um how is that how does that look like for you that's a very good question we just had um a survey we had 57 people men come through our house in this last year and out of the 57, four, only four, were a success. Mm. The others either went back to prison or went back to jail or went back to the street and lived a homeless life. So mm -hmm. we have four success stories mm -hmm. that came through our house that are still actively involved in their treatment, mm -hmm. working, going to their NA meetings, AA meetings, and participating in group therapy. Right. So... So far, those four are doing very well. They have their own apartments now, mm -hmm. and they're doing right. very well. Well, like I say this, it, the, the mission sometimes is not being able to save everybody, but being able to instill that in at least one person. If you're able to do that, then praise God, you change somebody's life. Yes. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes. Um, so once again, McBessie, I thank you for taking this time out of your day to come on Courtney's Corner. Um, I appreciate you. Before we go, um, if you want to tell the viewers where they can find more about you, where they can find more about your program. Yes, yes. You can visit us on our website, www.straighttalksupportgroup.org. Again, that's www.straighttalksupportgroup.org. All right. Well, thank you so and, much wait, for being one here. One more oh, question. Okay, I'm ahead. so sorry. Just one more question. Um, do you have any tips on how to identify these things? Because a lot of times um, people in our community are subconsciously unaware of these traumas that we have. And yeah. it's been so long that we just use these um, drugs and alcohols to cope with these things. And we push all this trauma to the back of our head. So how, what is a, a way or a tip that we can understand and realize that we're being affected by trauma and subconsciously moving because of that trauma? That's a very good question, and professionally, I'm not able to answer it mm -hmm. uh, in the way that it could be answered, but I can yeah. give you some information, and you can go on the NAMI website, gotcha. and it okay. will give you different signs that a person can look at and try to 
understand what this person is dealing with, mm -hmm. such as depression, yeah. so, uh, to so identify can, some of the mood swings that a person may have. Yeah, so Miss Betsy, down, if you the bipolar, Miss Betsy, if you can, can you give us that um that website, please? Okay, it's just NAMI. You can go on NAMI, National Association on Mental Illness, N A M I. Thank and you so much. Thank you once again. We'll be right back with a performance by Torn to Soul right here on Courtney's Corner. You don't want to miss it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. What's up, everybody? My name is Tornasol. I'm from the Bronx, and this is Uptown off of my EP entitled Aura. Resist. Been around now. Independent queen, run this town now. I flipped that switch, I built this from the ground now. From the west side, living in the Bronx now. Oh, Lord. What you saying to me? Wasn't easy getting here, but this is meant for me, uh. I'ma break it down. Now I'm finna show you how. We going uptown. We going uptown. We going uptown. It ain't never going down. I'm feeling so nice. My team's going higher. Read between the lines, cause it's story time. We going up. It was a cold, dark night, and this girl fell high. So she rode around town to take a flight. They came out the alley, thought she was blind. And they tried to dim it down, but she saw her light. In the club, and she looking so clean. Heads turning, cause they know she is the queen. Now they fiending, cause they know her walk is mean. Got her girls, cause she keep her team up, her team, yeah. Now it's crazy, cause they jocking her what? So she finna break it down. Where we going uptown? We going uptown, town. We going uptown. It ain't never going. It ain't never going down. Cause we going uptown. Y'all gotta make sure. Anybody who tries to put you down, they're not worth the time. Your dreams is the most important, so you gotta stick with that tunnel vision and you gotta keep going uptown. <laughs> it's lit. Thank you, Courtney's Corner, for having me. <laughs> So we going uptown. We going uptown. First, I gotta tell you, I <laughs> love that song. Thank you. So, what was what was your thought process in writing this? Well, it's like it's kind of like one of those situations where you have to motivate yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have your team, you have your supporters, and stuff like that, but you, only you can push you as far right. as you want to go. So like it's self like self empowerment, self empowerment all day. Oh my God! So I have to tell you, when you came for the summit, which by the way, thank you. Thank you. I was like blown away. Thank but you. from the beginning, from your audition, when you did this song, I was like, damn. Right. So I'm telling you right now, this is going to be a banger. I I, I suggest you push this, push thank this, you. push this. Can you just let the viewers know? where they can find more about you. Yes, so, Torna Soul. My name is Torna Soul. You can go on Instagram, Torna Soul Artists. Uh, my website also, www.tornasoul.com. And everything is kind of connected. My music's on iTunes and Spotify and all that good stuff. Oh, well, thank you so much thank for being you. here. Uh, thank you for having family, me. Family, today has been a very heavy and thought-provoking one. I hope that through our discussions, we were able to give you clearer answers on what traumatic stress is, how to deal with it, and also how it is at times leads to substance abuse. Remember, you can win if you're dealing with it and or have dealt with traumatic stress. Seek support, communicate your feelings, and most of all, believe that you can and will overcome. Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration National Helpline number is 1-800-622-HELP also known as the Treatment Referral Routing Services. This helpline is 24 hours free and confidential treatment referral and information about substance abuse, disorders, prevention, and recovery are, are there for you in English and Spanish. I thank 
all of my guests for being here. I thank you, Tornado, for being here. Stay tuned, because we have more this season here on Courtney's Corner. Break your wine up. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm Courtney of Courtney's Corner. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all social media handles. There's more. Don't miss it. We love you.